three, two, one. We're live. We're back on. It's, uh, this is going to be your Monday podcast. And today, if you're not watching on the YouTube channel, I'm joined by Mr. Doug Phase Sensor, as he's known online. Here, man. <laughs> I'm super excited to do this podcast. Super, with you. super excited. I can't wait, man. Let's go. Excited. Let's go. <laughs> So we've been um, we've been at the Gymshark pop up store today. It's been crazy. Plan hands down one of the biggest events they've done so far, and you guys were you created an impact today. The amount of you that came down, saw us, said hello, shared your story, shared some love. You brought gifts, man. I've got dog bowls. I've got some dog toys. I saw the the big got, bag. Yeah, yeah. we got coffees. We've got more sweets galore, protein bars to keep us going. You guys keep us hooked up at these events. That's crazy. Yeah, they're good. You know that we struggle sometimes, so you're keeping us peppy with the caffeine and the sweets. <laughs> so thank you all for coming down. It's uh, It's been a great day. We've got one more day to go at this stage, so it's just Saturday now. We're recording this, and, um, and we've got Sunday, and then we're all kind of heading back Monday. But Doug and I haven't seen each other for... Two years? Two years. Last time we saw we'll each other... We'll say two years. It's been like two, maybe two and change. Yeah, too long. <clears throat> two years way. too long. Two years too long. Yeah. And we've decided, we, all of us, between all the lads now, we've decided we need to make more of an effort on a personal level, to go and see each other and make time and do shit. Because one, we love working together as a group. And two, you guys like seeing it. It's collaboration. So it's like, yeah, it's a key to life. It is. Collaborating, spreading spreading wings, making those little webs that filter out everywhere and little connections. So we're going to make an effort in the next coming months to go out, work together, spend some time together, chill out, um, fly back and forth between get people together, maybe do some surfing. I never surfed before. Never so. surfed. I suck. Yeah, I stayed at once for like five seconds, it was a victory. I mean, I would be down <laughs> to try, yeah. but I don't know if I'm going to do that well. No, but that's the point. It'd be funny. It would we'll be funny. We'll hook some GoPros up to the boards and just be, we could do like a reel of just face plant. Just an end, a minute long of just <laughs> bam, bam, bam. <laughs> See, like the thing is, I don't even know if I could face plant because I don't even know if I'll be able to stand up on the board. It would just be like a little montage of me just going like, yeah, just flumping. Yeah. Just like trying to grab the board and get up on it, but I won't be able to. I went down to stay with David and, and he can't really surf prop. He's a little bit better than me. He looks he's, like he's a surfer. Out, yeah. He's a little bit better because he's been out doing it a couple of times. But Dill, his mate, who's there, he pops up on that thing and he's like an advert for surfing. He's good. He's like whipping it back and forth, yeah. making it look like it's glued to him. I'm like, I can do this. I got up. I tanked. I tanked. I must have tanked 20 times. I was so tired by the end that when I stood up for five seconds, I was like, victory and I'm out. And I'm walking, <laughs> walking out the sea with board under my arm, you know, like proper surfer, having my Baywatch moment. And you look like a Baywatch guy too. I'm, I'm so. strolling I mean, out thinking, yeah, yeah, keep it going, keep it going. For the, and then literally as I get to the shallows, I step on a crab, the motherfucker clamps onto my toe. <laughs> Wait, are you I serious? That, I never dropped that sofa so fast and I came hopping out the sea with this freaking crab. Yeah, dude. Can I be honest with you for a minute? Nip me good. I've hated crabs my entire life. They just always freak me out. Like, <laughs> I used to grow up on a canal back at home, and my, my grandparents used to, like, go crab. Like, they'd have, like, a cage, and, like, they'd fish for crabs, and they would make the crabs, like, Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they would do it in the baiting. backyard. Is it a crab, yeah, crab you, get, like, a, you get, like, a bait, like a, like a giant cage, and you, like, put some bait in it, like, some food, or, like, something that they're going to come and feast on, and they take the crabs, and then bring them inside, and they freak me out. Like, crabs, lobsters, all that stuff. Just looking at them, <laughs> it gets me so scared. So every time I go in the water, I try not to, like, touch my feet on the ground, and I'll look down to make sure there's no crabs. Never in my life have I stepped on a crab. So Never. for you to have that bad luck of that's, just like, no, walking up a like, beach, no, just stepping on it. You sure you stepped on a crab and everything? It, like it was it stuck on me, your foot? Yeah, like it nipped me in a shook. Like, ah, and see, that would scare like, the hell out of me. Tiny little thing. I don't care how big it is. And it was just like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crab, it was crab crab there waiting for surfers. You think you look cool? Said, you're not a good surfer. Let me let me show you what's up. Let me show you the people who you really You know what? Maybe I won't go surfing with you then because I'm bound to get hit by the biggest crab. I'll get the crabs. I'll get the crabs. Not the crabs. If crabs freak you out, you ever seen one of these? That's real. Is that like a... Oh, a spider... I've heard spider of those crabs. things before. Look at this thing. Do you know, yeah, they're like six feet thing. across. Imagine that thing. Wait, they're six feet wide? Yeah, they're huge. No way. Get out. Look, look, oh, look, my look, God. Look, that's dude. a dude holding it. I hope you're going to put this on the screen so they can I see will, that too. Yeah, I'll put that up on the screen. It's horrific. Oh, so, if you've never seen dude. This, like, dude, are those killers? It's a Japanese spider crab. They look like aliens. Just Google it right now and you want to go about four pictures in. Maybe one, two, three, six picture in. It gives you a perspective of what these size of these things are. Are they now, killers? No, I don't think they're that bad. People, but apparently they don't taste good. So people don't really kind of... How would anyone want to eat that thing? There's a diver coming up on the back on. Look at the size of that beast. So these things are like a... they like a big crab body, but then they have these like six foot spanning wide legs. Think of like a daddy long leg spider, except Into in the water crab. and thicker. Oh, look at that. 
Dude, why is he holding that thing? Because he's a weirdo. How could God you? damn. So like I, I swear but, that thing would like just pulverize you with its with its leg. This is the thing, like I half love nature, half fear it. Yeah, I'm the same way. <laughs> I don't really have many fears, but like no. some of the things that are unknown in life, like you especially in the sea. Heights. Like, the heights bother you. Not really. I don't like flying too much, but I've been flying so much in the past month where I just don't care about it anymore. See, my flight theory is fuck it. Because you, you can't that. do anything. Yeah. Like, it is what it is. Yeah. You just hope you've, you've got a good pilot. I just always try to think about, like, when you're about... Like, you know when you go on a plane and you get scared because of the turbulence, or at least I get this way. Yeah. Oh, I've got a way of helping you with that. Oh, yeah? But you carry on the story. For okay, me. so, like, I get so scared of turbulence. Like, the littlest amount of turbulence will make me freak out, and I, like, grip the arms like this, and, like, I start sweating profusely out of my armpits, and I just think that I'm going to go down and the Every plane's going to crash. You ever had really Every, bad turbulence? Yeah, I've had really that bad really, turbulence. Just that drop thing? Actually, when I came back from the Birmingham Expo. Oh, yeah? Yes, two years ago. <laughs> that was the worst turbulence of my life well, when I came back from the Expo. Well. Oh, it's not about New York. Six hours. Six hours. For the so first, like, 30 minutes, it was good. For the next, like, two hours, it was horrible. The whole way? Two hours Ooh, straight. That sucks. And then for the last, like, three hours, it was pretty good. But I always get so scared that when I land, I'm just dripped in sweat and I'm just like... <laughs> Oh, thank you, God. I'm so happy I'm alive. So I try to think about that. Thank you, God. I'm so happy I'm alive moment throughout the entire later, flight. Do something good afterwards to show that you're happy. Yeah, I just like I have an extra pep in my step, okay. and I feel. So great. here's how you deal with this: if you hate turbulence, you know when you're in a bath and you got a rubber ducky. Okay. Yeah, I, I can. So I can the see water it. in the bath is the sky. Okay. You know, if you've got the rubber ducky and then you hit the water, it ripples, and those ripples then go under the duck, and the duck bobs up and down. Right. That's turbulence. So That's you just think of yourself is. as a rubber ducky. Yeah, you're just rubber ducky. Just rubber ducky. Just moving naturally up and down. Where did you get that from? from a, I tell you where. It, it's from a pilot. Okay, so we were flying. Where were we flying from? It, I think we were flying from LA. We were either flying out of LA or flying to LA, and then we were going through to Australia, somewhere like that. How long is and that sh- flight? Australia flight? Yeah, flight. LA to Australia. Like 12 hours? It's like... To get to the LA airport, you fly, we flew like four or five, and then you jump straight onto the plane for like another, something stupid, like 15 to 18 hours, maybe 13 to 15 hours. Oh, so it's hours. way more than 10. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you it's lose, a long, you lose an entire day. Yeah. Let your child in. But the guy, check this out, so we're waiting for the plane, and the pilot turns up, and he's this Chuck Norris looking dude. Like, <laughs> legit, this looks like Chuck Norris. And then we're, so we start talking to him, and it's, the, it's in the era where I think Alan Gabby was still kicking around with us. Um, so it was a couple, good couple of years ago. I think it was the first time we flew to Australia. The first Australian. I wasn't there. Yeah. So we're there and Alan obviously does all the crazy stuff like handstands and things like that. So he's doing something daft and the pilot goes, yeah, yeah I can do one arm press ups. We're going, Chuck, Chuck, you can't do one arm press ups. You're like 50 year old pilot. He's like, I'll do you. Yeah, one, one arm, arm press I don't even know if I could do one arm press up. No, well, I, I can do like two. And it's that cheeky one where you kind of angle your body where it, it's no, not like a straight... Yeah, you have like your left legs out eight feet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so like, so like, yeah, 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 yeah. I got this, you. This dude, this, this guy drops down and just starts banging out one arm press-ups like they're nothing. And he's just this 50-year-old dude in, in full pilot uniform. Just and that's bang, why you bang. called him Chuck Norris. We were like, uh, no, we called him Chuck Norris because he just looked like him. Oh. And then he was like... And then he started doing this and we're like, are you Chuck? <laughs> are you Chuck Norris? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, no, but I used to be a fighter pilot. And we're like, what? He's like, yeah, he used to be an f- actual fighter pilot, being in dogfights in the sky. I'm like, we are sweet. Anything happens to this motherfucking plane? Yeah, you know you're going to be safe. safe. Yeah, I would feel fine. Deep. I know I have a pilot like that. I'm yeah. not going to really I never felt sort of safe on a flight in my life, but he told me the rubber ducky thing. And why, you, you asked him about the turbulence or somebody else did? Yeah, somebody else asked it and he went, let me tell you this. About the chances of planes going down is this. And even when you feel real rough turbulence, rubber ducky. It's just rubber ducky. Okay. So it's just, it's just ripples in the air. It says you're just going over them. So guys out there, if you have any fears of flying like me, just think about the rubber ducky. You're I'll a rubber you ducky. On that. You sit there going, rubber ducky, rubber ducky. Next time, Lex, <laughs> I get some terrible turbulence, I'm going to think about you and I'm going to message you saying, listen, the rubber ducky. The rubber ducky, send me is. emojis of rubber ducky. <laughs> <laughs> You'll know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's actually cover, for people who don't know. So it's Doug is your real name, obviously, because... Nobody's going to pick Doug as a nickname. It's a weird nickname. If you've got a nickname called Doug, I want to know why. Let us know in the comment <laughs> section. It's an, unless you're a grave digger and you... I don't know. Doug We're going Graves. down the path of that one. Doug Graves? Yeah. <laughs> That's a wrestling name. Wait, is it really? Doug Gra- No, but it would be great. Doug Graves? Yeah. He takes WWE over... WWE Continental Champion. He beats Doug the Undertaker. He sends the Undertaker Instant. in his first Doug Grave. <laughs> and then it becomes like a new Instant thing feud. in WWE. WWE, hit me up. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, don't hit me up, actually. <laughs> Doug Graves. Um, so, Phase Sensor is what you know now online because you're part of, Doug is part of a gaming team known as Phase. Why Sensor? It's just a random name I made up when I was 12. So that's your, your gaming nickname, yeah. Sensor. So, so like yeah. everyone is called Phase and then whatever their name is. Their nickname is that. And online we're not talking like, hey, fellas, you fancy coming around to mine and play some uh, like some uh, American football on the computer for a little few hours. We're talking like professional full-time gamer. Yeah. Competitions, prize money, world tours. All well, that it's bigger. It's just, it's not just like competitions. So there's like a lot of different groups in Phase. So you have like, there. It start, Phase started as like a clan of, like these, they call them trick shotters. So they would, they would take a sniper in Call of Duty and they'd like find the tallest building in the map and they would jump off and spin around a bunch yeah, of times and just shoot a sniper across the map and get a kill. Like that, that was really how FaZe Clan started. And then as it got more popular, it became bigger. It became like a real organization. And then FaZe Clan wanted to branch out into esports. So they wanted a Call of Duty professional team because they were involved in Call of Duty. And then now they have multiple esport teams over different titles. But I was recruited into FaZe because I was a Call of Duty professional player and they wanted me to play on their team. So I was never like the guy... So you were already playing professionally prior to joining FaZe? Yeah, I was never like a trick shot or anything like that. I was always just a pro player because I wanted to be the best player. And uh, FaZe gave me the opportunity to play for them and then I branched out into YouTube. So like I did YouTube and and gaming and that's how I got in. It's uh, Yeah, so for all the parents out there that might be listening to you, kids are gamers. Like it's legit. There is like if they're serious... And they want to do competitions and things. There's a there's a career out there. Yeah, it's very lucrative. Career. I say it all the time. Like I went to school and I didn't get the best grades because I was so focused on gaming. And this was before I even won any championships. And um, then I, I won a championship and I went back to college and I said, you know what? I did what I wanted to do. I'm gonna go get my degree now. And then um, I decided to take a year off gaming or a year off school to focus on gaming and see if I can make something of myself. And luckily and fortunately enough for me, I got the opportunity to play on FaZe and I took advantage of the opportunity. That was a good idea though. Take a year out, see if you can do it. And if not, you go Well, I knew that if it didn't work out in a year, if I didn't see that there was going to be a future coming anytime soon, that I would just go back to school. And worst case scenario, which is great about, you know, America these days, worst case scenario, if I'm left with taking out student loans and getting my degree and then applying my degree to getting a real job, I'll be able to pay off those student loans. So yeah. I thought that was a pretty good backup plan. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, a year out, do that. Some people take a year out, go traveling, take a year out, see what you can make. Exactly. Yourself. That's cool. Because like, I always cool. saw, I always try to think of like the worst case scenario too. So I just imagine, okay, guys, this isn't going to work out for me. I'm not going to be a pro gamer. I'm not going to be like a social media influencer. And I'm, I'm going to have to go back to school. I'm going to be in debt, whatever, like $80,000 for student loans because yeah, yeah, that's yeah. how much it'll cost over four years. And I'll get a degree and I'll just bust my ass, I'll get the best marks I can, and I'll get an opportunity to work somewhere, and then I'll use that degree and I'll make the money back. Like, having that opportunity alone is really amazing. Like, I don't know, I just always think back at like old times when people didn't even have homes or, or yeah. lights or, I don't know, it's a random yeah, yeah, thought. Now we're making livings off of gaming and stuff. Yeah, now it's like yeah. your worst case scenario is that you have to take out student loans so that you can get your degree. Like, that, that's yeah. pretty cool to me. Like, yeah. I always thought there was so many opportunity out there, and I think having that mindset is what made me successful in the gaming world. Yeah, and, and it's that fact of realizing that you you already had a you you have a plan with a plan. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, it's not like fail all of, all or nothing fail, is it? Yeah, when no. you have that. I think that's an important thing as well. Is actually whenever you decide to do something, you don't just have one avenue. You have attack. You're doing a number of number of things. And you see what sticks. That's always your best plan. That's why I always try and encourage people to get like when I'm trying to do training videos and stuff. I'm trying to do shit that's outside the gym because I think a lot of people get stuck in this gym mentality like tunnel vision that they, they, they've got to go to the gym got to lift this got to do that and if they don't they're not going to be successful this isn't going to work the physique's not going to go this way which is why I'm doing the tough motor and the boxing challenges yeah. whilst lifting I got buddies who do the tough motor too yeah, yeah just to show you can get fit you can have fun you can meet new people you can do new things but you can still create a physique you, you love to look and at it, it sounds scary because I'm sure Lex and I aren't the first two people to tell you like make sure you have a backup plan I'm sure yeah. everyone who's if you watch us or if you watch anyone else in the world or even your family or friends, everyone always says, make sure you have a backup plan. Make sure you have a backup <laughs> yeah. plan. And to me, like I always was intimidated by that thought as a kid. Like, oh my God, I need to have a backup plan. It's so important because my first plan isn't going to work out. And like you want your first plan to work out because it's obviously your first plan. But it's not really hard to just think of something you want to do as a backup. Like, guys, my backup plan, I was just going to be a businessman. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was just going to wear a suit and tie and go to New York City every day yeah. and be some sort of a businessman doing something. I didn't love have that. A, didn't I have like a specific niche. I love that. Whenever you talk to somebody who's like 16, 17, you say, what do you want to do? And they go, property developing. And in the theory, they have this this idea that they'll buy one house, flip it, then buy three houses, flip, like, like it's that easy. Like there's no, no idea of the logistics that goes Yeah, into everybody's always business. talking about like get into real estate and invest your money into it. It's yeah, so it's, easy. It's yeah. so simple. But nah. I mean, everything, everything is always, if you imagine whatever you want to do, 
make it twice as hard as you think it'll be. And it, it, I expect I'm, it to be twice. I was in the car with Ryan Terry uh, the other day, and we we're like going to the gym, and he was talking about like a clothing line that he had before he uh, yeah, saw with Gymshark. RT, RT clothing, or he had RT clothing, and I was just talking about like how do you start a clothing company? Because I mean, I haven't even talked to Ben from Gymshark about this, but everybody that's a social media wants to do like clothing. They're always like sell merch, sell merch, make clothing, and I, I just don't want to do that. Yeah, and no. I was like, why? Why is it so? He's like, oh, it could be very lucrative if you do it the right way, but then you're gonna have to buy a lot of it in bulk, and then you're gonna have to sell it, and then you got to like buy. 30,000 of it if you want to get it for the cheapest price from China so it sounds simple like when you just summarize summarize through it but there's a lot of work that goes into it so same thing with like the flipping houses I'm sure that's simplified like what it is okay buy a house and flip it make the money buy another house flip it make the money and then rent out a bunch of apartments and then make yeah. a good living so that you don't have to work anymore which I mean that's what it is at but the end of the day essentially but what it is most of the time is you're investing everything you own in every property you re redevelop and rebuy so if at any point during this buildup of properties crashes if there's any crash you lose everything. Right. It just happened to a lot of people, obviously. So it is a big risk. Like, it, and people don't think of that. They don't think, they think they buy one house, invest in another one, then keep money from something somewhere. Nah. It's like all in each time until you get to a point where now it's starting to pay you back. And it's also but, about living yeah. inside your means, too. Yeah, like exactly. Not going yeah. too high. Over you can't your go means. balling when you're trying to build something. Like, you got to understand the process, too. That's definitely a big thing. Yeah. So, how did you get into So, you took a year out. You were gaming through childhood. Yeah, I played video games my whole life, like uh -huh. Mario. Zelda, so how Pokemon. Did you dial it down to being COD just because of the popularity of the game? Uh, it was like I was playing Mario games and they were really fun. I played against my friends like Mario Party and Super Smash Bros. And I was always better than my friends and it was like boring because I wanted to have a challenge. Like <laughs> I wanted somebody to beat me. And just beat everyone. Yeah, like I didn't have enough God friends. Dog, stop looking at the other screen, you're cheating. <laughs> I had like such an addictive personality to like something that I liked. Like, I love Super Smash Brothers, and I would play against, like, the beginner levels, and I would go through it, and I'd win. Then I'd play against the medium, then the hard, then the hard and, like, the most hardened level you can, and I'd beat that. And then I'd want to play against my friends, but none of my friends cared as much as I did for the video game. So what, I had to yeah. resort to, like, going online. So um, I played a bunch of different video games that I liked, and so then Call of the Duty. first online Call game. of Duty. Yeah, that's the first online game. the first game online game that I played. Because oh, okay. I played RuneScape, and I played MapleStory, the PC games online. But those are like yeah. free world, roaming around, like level up your character type thing. It wasn't really like a competition. There was no way of judging who's better. or anything like that. No, it was yeah. like you could level up your skills in the game, but it wasn't like you like could Like a well, World of Warcraft style thing. Yeah, that you can yeah. compete or you can. Can you? I don't know, you can, right? It's well, just about PvP level. things, aren't they? Yeah, but That's it's not like the main player, focus of the game, right? It's just strictly like getting your character leveled it's up. It's mainly about cool you and little characters and yeah. things, yeah. With Call of Duty, it was about like, I don't know, for me it was a lot of fun because you would rank up and it was like really, really hard for me at the beginning and you would have to like rank up and you could get to the 10th prestige, you get this really cool gold cross and like these really cool guns with these really cool camos. And I just thought it was really fun. So, you know, get to the 10th prestige after like six months of playing the game. Get and then like what? the 10th prestige so this is like a you level up system. from like 1 to 55 then when okay. you get to level 55 you're able to enter prestige 1 and then you start it over again you do 1 to 55 you know prestige, prestige 2. 2 1 so to 55 and these to prestige 10. things are icons and it just shows in the world like when you join a lobby How this guy's 5th prestige he's really good yeah, you know yeah. oh this guy's only like no prestige level 20 he's not yeah, that good yeah. so it's just like a ranking to like flex on other people to show how much <laughs> you play the game or I guess how good you are at it so you get to the 10th prestige and you say okay What's after this? And then you look at the public leaderboards where who has the most kills? Who has the most score? Who has the most wins? And you're like, oh, that's what I want to do now. So then every year the new Call of Duty comes out. So the new, new Call of Duty came out. Uh, my second Call of Duty that I played instantly. You start fresh. Hooked. If this new game comes out, do you go back to yeah. zero? Yeah, so it's back to zero, brand new oh, ranking, right? So, you have to, so there's literally can be a game changer every new game is released. If every single new game. Somebody has to every get single back year. up to where they were from the Yeah, because if you're one. like, say you're the number one guy in the rankings in yeah. this Call of Duty, and then the next one comes out, everyone starts fresh because it's a brand new game. Damn. It's like a brand new disc, brand so new basically game. basically every year you, you slam back to zero. Right, so... I play the new game, instantly get to the 10th prestige. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I look at the leaderboards. I'm in like the top 1,000. And I'm yeah. like, wow, I'm, I'm pretty high up there. Well, I got 10th prestige. I unlocked everything in the game. What's next? Uh, I'm top 1,000. Let me keep playing. Oh, now I'm 900, 800, 700, 600. All the way to the top 10. Now I'm number 5, number 4. I got to get number 1 now, so I'm number 1, you know? Jesus. So you play 12 hours a day. I sacrifice everything in my life. 12 hours a day. Didn't I played sports. I played basketball, football. Had a bunch of friends, you know, played games with my friends, like outdoor activities, all that stuff. Stopped all of Gone. them. No talking to friends, no talking to family. Jesus. Gotta get number one. That's a fucking commitment. Gotta get number one. So I got number one, and then I was like, all right, well, now what do I do? So I held number one for like months. Because this is for nothing at this point. Nothing. nothing you get yeah, nothing it from it. Yeah, yeah, no. It's, just, it's yeah. just like when you go on the game and you look at the leaderboard and you press wins to go to the top, you're gonna see Dougie Fresh. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> yeah. Right? 
So I'm like, all right, I spent so much time to get to this spot. I got to hold it now because I don't want to lose it. I just spent so much time to get here. And then my, one of my buddies one day was like, hey, go on this website called Game Battles. It's where all the good players play. So at this point, was there already a leagues running like... There was leagues that I didn't and know about. Everything. Yeah. The sponsorships were already going. There point. wasn't sponsorships, but there was Not leagues. Like now. You could get a few thousand dollars in a tournament. Okay. You know? So, so, my, still, so still compared to now, it was nothing. Like it they is. were still competitive, but it wasn't as big as what it is now. Yeah. It was like in its infant stages. And my buddy's like, you got to go on GameBattles.com and try this out. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. So I go on Game Battles, I get torched. I get destroyed. <laughs> I was like, whoa, wait, who are these players? And these are the guys who like really take it seriously and yeah. who really want to win. So like to me, like that's that's what I love. Like I want to be so bad at something and have a passion to learn at it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I said that the other day we were, we were doing something in the gym. Oh, you you with the ab exercise you gave me, where you simple one where you hold the dumbbells between your feet. Yeah, and then do the leg extension. No, um, right. What would you call? You it? didn't like those, like the leg raises. Leg raises with dumbbells. Like your lower abs. Yeah. yeah. And so what you do is you extend fully out and then keeping your legs straight, you bring that you bring your feet all the way over the top of your body and then you drive your heels up towards the ceiling. It's kind of like that rocky sit up that you see in some of his movies, but you have a weight between your feet. And I've never really tried this. So I didn't trust that I wouldn't drop the weight in my own face. But then there was like, no, you'd be sweet. Just give it a go, give it a go. Yeah. And I sucked at it when I first did it. So I did like five more sets. Yeah. Until I felt like, okay, I've got this movement. Right. Like, I just got to get it. And now I'm doing that all the time. And you like it. Yeah, now I like it. And so I'm that's the thing, though, it. but you like it, so yeah. it's good. Yeah. Like with Call of Duty, I loved it so much. And it just like, it just, the passion just kept growing and growing and growing. And I just wanted to find like, what was the end game with it? Like, where was the best that I could end up in it? And like, how could I get there? So then they introduced me to the website. I found out about it. Worked my way up the ranks. My first team that I joined was a pro team. And then I played the whole year with those guys and I ended up winning. So them. how did you join a pro team? Um, I'm really good at like talking to people and like making networking. connections with people and networking. So I would find out who the best players are and I would study how they'd play and I, I'd try to like I'd get my ass kicked and I would just learn what they would do and I would constantly just all right run it again. All right, I didn't get it, run it again. I'll, I'll play the game and I'll do it every single time until I get it perfect. I, I don't care if it takes me a year. I'll do it every single day, every second of the day until it's perfect. Oh, man, that, so then eventually you're gonna get noticed and respected by people. And then I got lucky. I joined a team and I played with them for the year and. We won the biggest tournament, the national championship, the final tournament of the year. We're getting like top eight the whole year, which is like a pro placing, but it's not yeah. first. And then finally, the very last biggest tournament, we won it. And that, that's what really put me on the map. As a team. Yeah. And that was it. That was, then after that, it was obviously playing. That's when I quit. Straight. That's oh, when I went yeah, back to school. That's when you quit. Yeah, because that's when I figured, okay, now Call of Duty, I spent so much of my time doing this. It's time to move on. I'm 18 years old now. I got to get a degree and grow up. I can't do this for the rest of my life. So I took my money and I put it to school and I said, I'm going to be a businessman. I wanted to go to the NFL. I wanted to walk into Villanova, walk onto their football team, be a superstar in the NFL. But Villanova never took me into their school. <laughs> they, they denied me three times. So um, I said, you know what? I'll just go to a different school, get a degree, and then I'll transfer to Villanova. And they kept denying me when I tried to transfer. I tried you like, you wanted times. to play football? Yeah. As what position? Either a wide receiver or a defensive back. It's two very different positions. No, they defend each other and attack each other. It's the same thing. What? You said receiver? And defensive back. So the defensive back defends the receiver. It's like when a receiver's like running out to catch a pass, there's yeah. a guy who like defends that guy. That's the defensive back. Serious? It's called cornerback. Like a cornerback. Corner oh, yeah, I know yeah. cornerback. Yeah, corner. Yeah, cornerback. But you're not on the same field at the same time. Defense and offense. Yeah, yeah. Corners, that's defense. Very two receivers, positions. offense. One you're catching, one you're, getting, one you're hitting, yeah. one you're getting hit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when I was in high school, I never started in football because I would always miss games and practices because I played so much yeah, Call yeah. of Duty. So, like, the best receivers would get defended by, like, the defensive backs or, like, the B yeah. defensive backs. And yeah, I was yeah, a B yeah. defensive back. Uh -huh. So I liked it because I was playing against, like, the best receivers and I liked hitting them. Because yeah, yeah, I yeah. thought they sucked and I thought I was better than them, but I couldn't get to play because I, I didn't go to practice enough. So I would take it out and hit them in practice. <laughs> or, like, receiving was always my favorite thing. I loved just catching catch footballs. It was yeah. so much fun. I played cornerback at uni. Oh, did you? Yeah, but it's English in my football, so it doesn't really count. Was it still good, though? Like, fun? But well, fucking, yeah, I loved it. It's so much yeah, fun, isn't it? I started it? to hit people for, like, yeah. eight, what is it, 80 minutes or whatever. Uh, Yeah, 15. It it's 15 minute quarters. So it's an hour game, isn't it? But you 60 play minutes. For like two hours you know, normally, isn't it? Which yeah, but there's, like, breaks in between, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so American football, for me, so many people in England, especially trying to watch American football, are like, don't get it, stop to start all the time, shit, can't understand it. If you understand the rules of American football, it's one of the greatest sports to watch because it. it's like war. Like there's the, it's the strategies. It is like war. The, actually. It's war. You've got defense versus offense. Like whereas in, in the, every English game, I don't think of any other game actually where defensive and offensive teams are separate. So in American football, when your defensive team is on the field, your whole offensive team is off the field. Yeah. 
So it's, you have like two teams in one with American football. And obviously, so each side is trying to figure out what the other side is going to do so that they can stop that play and then get the ball back. It's very That's strategic. The whole it's, and it's, when you get a good game, oh my God, it has you out your seat the whole time. Whereas with like football in, in Europe, it's like soccer, every player's on the field at yeah, the same all time. The time. So it's Which complete. is like more legit, like it's easier to follow. I yeah. totally get that. But yeah, if you put your time studying the way American football works, it is such a good game to watch. One of the, I remember there's a Super Bowl from like 10 years ago, I think. I was watching when I was a kid, and it was the Baltimore Ravens versus, I want to say Patriots, but I think that's wrong, but they did two back-to-back kickoff touchdowns each. So one kicked off touchdown, and so everyone was like, fuck it, yeah! Yeah, yeah. And the other team and kicked back, and they back. ran it straight back yeah, in. It was crazy. just like, holy shit, immediately leveled it again. That's like insane, actually. It was, and it was the Super Bowl. It was the Super Bowl, you know? The place to be seen, that kind of shit. The Ravens awesome. won it, right? Yeah, I think the Ravens won. With Joe Flacco? Possibly, I can't imagine. I don't know who they beat. I but forgot they had who it a was. nasty defensive team. Yeah, they were, they were just brutal. With they were Ray Lewis un- and like Terrell Suggs oh, and all those guys. They were. I remember. Their line was just solid. Yeah, but I played American football for Newcastle University, and then we played for I think another like team in Newcastle, and pretty much we, we were shit in comparison. Like we were, we were probably we would have got beaten by like, what's your school in America? You've got kindergarten, then you've got middle high school. school, and then high school. Your high school is like our college, isn't it? You think so? Because your college is university. Yeah. And so your high school high is High school is right before university. College. Yeah, because we have college and university. So college is your final two years of school for us. Oh, so that's when you're like yeah. 17 years so old? So you have secondary school, which takes you up to 16 years old. Then 17, 18. It's those college. Two years is college. Oh, okay. And then university after that. See, college and university, we both, we say the same thing. Like, yeah, yeah. university and college is the same thing. So do you, that, yeah. So yeah. for us, yeah. So we would easily, at university level, get beaten by a high school definitely get beaten by a high school American football team and def- I think we get beat by what's below high school middle school yeah I no those are like little kids you're yeah. talking about like 14 year olds yeah I think they'd out, out technique so. all day long yeah because no, the 14 year olds don't have technique yet like they don't learn it they would have better technique than the you British really think guys so? American football. I can't imagine yeah. a little 14 year old American yeah. kid beating like a 20 year old grown yeah because there's no American football up until you hit uni oh really pretty much yeah no I've never seen it before okay so they start when you're 12 you could start when you're 12 years old here yeah exactly in America, not here. Huh. Here, you, we're, so we're all starting like. I'd pay to see that. Yeah, I think I honestly think they'd win. I don't think so. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll put a bet on that with you. Yeah. I can't see a grown man like getting tackled by a little allowing boy. Allowing it. No, I can't <laughs> see that. Like, but maybe a tag one, a flag game, you know, ta- um, where they have like the strip strippable. See, I was thinking inside. maybe basketball. Like I can see that with basketball because some fourteen year olds are freaks and they're like super yeah. tall. Oh, 100% basketball. We get whipped all day. Although I, I used to play basketball up to national level. Basketball is fun too. I was point guard. Yeah? Uh, I played that up until I was... Why did I play it to? I went to school. I hope it was about 18. I so started this, playing a bit more rugby. This guy's a triple threat. He's a fitness freak, basketball, <laughs> philanthropist, and Tom Brady That's in the it. NFL. <laughs> He's everything. Was, and my problem is, is like I'm pretty good at everything, but not amazing at, at one, one thing. thing. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So you can put me in anything, I'll do well. But at, be, to be outstanding at something, I don't think I was ever outstanding at any one thing. Uh. That's my problem. See, for me, I want to be outstanding at one thing. Yeah, I would be okay at everything else. Looking That's back, I, I think I could have been really. I think I could have been outstanding at rugby for the positions I played at, like wing and things, because of my movement and my speed and ability to hit. But I didn't start playing rugby till I was like eighteen, so I missed the boat already by that point. Because you need to be playing it since you're young, just so you've got all the techniques down and perfect. Yeah. But like, I picked up rugby at eighteen and was doing pretty well. Like. Yeah, we got offered like some a semi pro kind of placement. After you just didn't have enough time. Well, I just moved away from you from where the towns were. I was like, you know, semi pro rugby in England. I mean, it's cool. You get to travel with the team and do things, but you don't get paid a lot or nothing really. But you know, and when play, you turn eighteen, it's like at a point where you need to figure out a way to support yourself. Well, this will have been twenty one because it's university, so so even more then. So, so you yeah, figure out a way to support point, yourself. Exactly. So I moved off to go and do work. And then if you want to try to meet a girl, they're gonna first thing the girl's gonna ask you is. What do you do for a living? <laughs> and you gotta you gotta have an answer for them. You gotta tell yeah. them what you do. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's true. That's true. So yeah, I made that. I made the. Uh, I think going back, there's definitely different things I tell my. What would you tell your, I don't know, fifteen year old self now? Just have more confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Have more confidence and don't be afraid of like putting your thoughts out there for people and and don't expect everybody to accept you. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel. Here's one. Most people aren't gonna fucking like you. <laughs> yeah. Because if you think like that, but don't in, not in a negative way. Just assume like that there are gonna be people out there that you just cannot 
be good friends with or you're not going to get on with them. Some people just don't work together. It, it, and it's just the way. But the more you invest yourself in a lifestyle and a way of acting, a way of being, you'll surround yourself more with those positive type of people. Just like if you're negative and bad, you surround, you'll tend to surround yourself with the same Nobody wants vibes. to be negative, okay? Yeah. I, I know negative people and they don't like being negative and they feel like they're trapped in negativity. Yeah. I think it's like, for me, when I was a kid growing up, I always would try too hard to impress people yeah, and same. I would try too hard to not say the wrong thing instead of just saying how I really felt. And that actually makes you less likable. Exactly, it makes yeah. you extremely less likable. Like I went throughout the first half of my life thinking that nobody liked me. I felt like I was just not a likable guy even though I knew that I had good intentions, I just didn't mm. understand how I could put those yeah, thoughts wow, and feelings like out there. I'm a good guy. I do nice things. I go out and wear yeah. this and the other. Yeah. It's and true. I think I think the biggest thing is just like having confidence in yourself and and just how you speak to people and how you talk to people and yeah. the way you look and your mannerisms. It's very important to be self aware of like the way you sit yeah. down, the way you engage with people, the way you make eye contact eye with contact them. Is a big one. And it's it takes practice because yeah. I wasn't good at this. I still have to learn a lot, but I wasn't good at this when I was a kid, and I think my first job helped me a lot. I worked the front desk at a gym, and I was able to speak to people and say hello to them every day, and you would see a variety of people from old men to young girls to whatever it is, and um, they would all have different attitudes, different demeanors, and I would say the same thing over and over and over again, and everyone would respond the same way, but a little bit different, and you would like learn and pick up on how people speak and how they mm-hmm. act, so to me, like that was really important. I think communication is key in everything that you do, so I would tell myself, um, you know, Doug, you have some really good intentions. You're a really good guy. People are eventually going to see that in you and just go along with the process and eventually everything will work itself out. I think it letting go of making, trying, trying to make people like you. Uh, that doesn't mean like be a dick and go, hey, accept me, it's who I am. Yeah, that's no, annoying too. Don't, you don't want to be like that. Me after, like, yeah, that, that actually annoys me too. You're, you're not, you don't have freelance to be a dickhead and then claim to want to be accepted that you're a dickhead. That doesn't work. Like you have to put in efforts to be a decent human being and put yourself out there. But don't be afraid that like somebody might take advantage of you like you're going to learn these lessons and you have to learn these lessons people, sometimes you have to learn it the hard way too. yeah people will take advantage of you if you're a nice person it happens to everybody it's like give an inch take a mile kind of mentality that some people have some people are legitimately just out for themselves and it doesn't matter what industry you work in where you work whether it's school a job whatever the same crappy little things always happen when you just get a certain amount of people together the exact same scenarios always play out doesn't matter if they're like doesn't matter what world what leaders or yeah. gym shark athletes or or you're just like in school, your co-workers, playground, school, playground, whatever it is. Workplace, like big workplace. Same. It's human nature. Yeah, it is. Perfect. Yeah, human nature. Like him and I, absolute <laughs> hate each other. Yeah, yeah, I can't stand can't the guy. Can't stand this guy. Put a camera on his though. You pay me $20,000 for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's honestly, I think that's one of the, I, I was exactly the same as a kid, man. That was a I, joke, by the way, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we pay him 15 <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Yeah. yeah. I'll come back for all that. I'll come back on every episode. <laughs> it's, uh, I would say, say, as a kid, man, I kind of felt sometimes like I was on the edge of the group. Like I couldn't kind of find my place. Like you weren't the popular guy, but I you weren't the popular. loser. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, so I wasn't like in the cool gang, but I was, I, but I would be able to sit with them and, and I'd be involved in certain things they did. But then also, like I would talk to the uncle gang. I was the same exact way, actually. Yeah. And you used to know where to find you. And sometimes you'd like, you try and be someone else because you think that's what the cool gang wants. And then you find out actually just being yourself is usually good enough. And it takes a while to realize that. For yeah. me, it did at least. So I understand if you guys out there, you hear it all the time. Be yeah. yourself. Be yourself. Yeah. Be yourself. And some people are like, but I'm fucking nervous. I'm a nervous person. That's myself. And that is true to you. But then if you're like that, you've got to, throw, you've got to <clears throat> be yourself, but put yourself in situations where you don't like to develop yourself. Like if you don't like something about the way you are, you need to develop it and change it because no one else is going to do it for you. Yeah. Uh, so I was talking to someone the other day about... Um, they were like, oh, you're so good at talking in front of crowds and things like that. I'm like, no, I'm just good at talking. And then I have a fuck it attitude when there's people in front of me. Like my main fuck it attitude was when I used to compete on stage. Are you not nervous walking out there? I'm like, right, number one, yes, of course. But then number two, I stand at the side of the stage going, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, in right. my head literally yeah. over and over, fuck it, fuck it. And then three, I don't know most of these people in this crowd, never going to see them again. So Probably not. Fuck it. And then just get out there, the lights are so bright, I can't see anyone else anyway, so fuck it. <laughs> That's it. In, out, done, off. And then you think about what happens afterwards. But if you don't put yourself in that situation, you never know how you're going to react. It was like when I went, like I went to Las Vegas not too long ago and I jumped off a building and as I was jumping off, fuck it. Yeah. What? Yeah, the stratosphere. You never heard of that thing in Las Vegas? Oh, that like... Um, the dippy thing that jumps you off the edge. Yeah, you like you jump off the edge though. You do? Yeah, you jump off the edge, but you're harnessed in. 
Like you have like these two, there's like these two lines that go, these two cables that go all the way down the side of the building and you're in the middle of the cables and it like harnesses you. I want to say that you're like harnessed by the legs. I can't remember exactly. It's got to be a crotch harness, surely that whole thing where it goes underneath. I don't think like it goes. climbing harness? Oh yeah, it does go on your shoulders. It goes on your shoulder. It's like the crop one. Yeah. yeah. And then there's like two cables that connect you and they connect to the rope and you just jump down. You and just, I said, I said, fuck it. I jumped. Uh, dude, I think you're better than me at that. I don't know if I could make my legs do it. Skydiving, dumb skydiving before. Sit, you done it? Yeah, I've done I it twice. Do it so bad. Bungee jumping is the scariest. Yeah, I, don't no, know. I have no desire to do bungee jumping. I would do it again. Really? Yeah. The thrill is crazy. A load of elastic bands tied to a bridge. It's so scary. Like the feeling you get when you go down a roller coaster when your stomach drops. Think about that. Like times ten when you go bungee jumping. But I'll tell you what, skydiving, you don't feel so anything. It's not that thing there on the stratosphere where you sit in that. Thing no, it's not that one. You is actually that the like same go hotel? on a. Yeah, it's all it's all like next to each other. They're all in um this one hotel. There's like four rides at the top of the building, and one of them is when you jump off the building. The, I think what? it's that one right there. Stratosphere v- thrill ride. No, that's no, not, that's, that's a, a shoot, that's a shoot, ride shoot. actually. So you literally strat in what's it called? I don't remember. Like stratosphere free fall or something. Well, let's try that. Vegas stratosphere. But you don't jump head first. You jump like straight down. Does that make sense? Feet first. Feet first. Oh, yeah. here you go. There's a guy here. Okay, so you're kind of on a bungee cord, are you? Yeah, that's what it is right there. It wasn't even that scary, to be honest with you. How high up are you? On top of the building? You're all the way at the top, man. You're, you're pretty oh, high up. Oh, Jesus. It looks okay. a lot worse than what it actually you, you is. You can Google though. Stratosphere um, Tower Freefall. Yeah, I see what you're saying. That's pretty scary, though. You fall all the way from the top down to there? Yeah. Down to the front entrance? There's like a... Um, How many floors? I don't know. It's a lot, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep count. That's scary shit. Fair play to you. It sounds scarier and it looks scarier than what it actually is. Yeah, I'm sure if you did it. in a few cables. Have you ever done anything like that before? Like any? I've done rock climbing and then obviously where you like then have to kind of um, do you call it abseiling back down the rock face? I kind of done. Oh, you talking about when you like rappel? You rappel down the rock face. I did yeah. that on a mountain once in Mexico. Yeah, I've done things, little things like that from quite high up, but never like a free fall jump. But I really want to do a skydive. Really want to. It's do not one. even scary. No, I, not I, for I, a I second. genuinely just want... Like, I look out of a plane, and because it's so high up, that's you it, that's lose the perspective of exactly. the fear. Yeah, exactly. it's so high. That's why the bungeeing is scary, though, because you can see everything. Yeah, that's... Yeah, no, and no you design. feel it. Yeah, no with the, with the uh With the skydiving, it's completely different, because, like, for if you do it with a tandem, which means, like, you have a guy on your back with you, they're a professional, they've done it, like, 50,000 times already, and, like, you're really tight to this person, so it sounds kind of weird, but, like... When you're like set that tight to a guy and there's like a guy right behind you, you kind of feel like secure in a way. Yeah, because you've got sense? somebody else there who you can blame if he goes yeah. wrong. <laughs> and it feels like, like you were saying with the pilot, like you had Chuck Norris yeah, riding yeah. the plane, like you just you, felt so safe. So, so they give you that confidence. The boost. second that I like looked at, because I remember I was getting strapped up and I was a little bit nervous and I talked to the guy, I said, hey, how long have you been doing this for? He said, 30 years. Oh, fair enough. And yeah, I was yeah, like, like I'm good. okay, I feel okay now. Like <laughs> yeah, I good. instantly felt okay. He tightened me into him. I was so tight to this dude. And I'm like, yeah, everything's going to be completely okay. Yeah. And we just flipped out of the plane and rolled around a little bit. And then, um, How you know, you free fall like 30 seconds. Or? I think it was like a minute, minute, oh, wow. like a minute or nice. so 30, 30 to a minute. I don't remember, but I just remember the wind, like slapping my face. Like if you opened your mouth, your mouth would like extend <laughs> as big as it could possibly get. And it's just like very peaceful. Like you don't really feel any nerves in your body. Like you just feel Does your wind. stomach like go like when you go over a hill like quick. No, you know? not at all. You like you don't get that stomach drop. You don't get the stomach drop at all. Like I thought Crazy. I was gonna get it, but you don't. So freaking Because it's so high up, you can't see the ground. Like so there's no perspective. For think the about like yeah. this is like this black table right here, right? Like think about this. Think about this, but it's like blue, and that's the ground. Yeah, yeah. Like, you just think about like that. There's like, no concept of how. Like this line right here is like the major road for like a hundred miles, and like that's the line to you. Oh, yeah. It's so small. It's that small. It's like so small, so you don't really notice it, and you just it's feel wind smacking on your face. And then when the parachute comes out, you just like gently, you know, drop down, and it's very yeah, peaceful. So we're gonna do it this year. And my my friends have been losing losing weight to be able to do it. Oh, he's really? like a big lad. He's like six foot something, so he's like sixteen stone rugby lad. Yeah. But you've maximum weight for tandem jumps in the UK is fifteen stone. Oh, is it really? Yeah. So he's trying to get down. It's so pretty cheap too. It's like a hundred bucks a person. Dude, or it's so. nothing for it. It's, it's not bad. It's, it's a crazy. great experience. It's definitely something you guys should all do. Yeah, we're gonna do some some boys weekends away and do things like that. And that's a good way to step out of your comfort zone, guys. Very good. Throw yourself. We should do some when I come over. Skydive. I mean, there's a skydive in place like thirty minutes away. We should, from we should me. do something every time one of us goes to each other's. We should do it. You're challenge. gonna run out of things to do eventually, aren't no, you? No, we got there's the not, world to there's play. There's so with. many things. So many things we can do. All right, that's a good thing. I like that idea. Skydiving's fun. Yeah. I would definitely. I've done it That'd twice cool. and I got sick twice. What? So yeah, I felt you like nauseous. Up? I didn't throw up, but I felt like I was gonna throw up. No, that's not. So but good. it's still a fun feeling. I was the only guy, like both times. Nobody else felt that way. It's just me. Oh, okay. So it's got to be me. Yeah, maybe it's you. Yeah, you'll, you'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> well, that's what we've got going on. So um, we're currently sat in a hotel room in Birmingham. The weather's been lovely. You've been lucky with the weather. It's been comfortable. Yeah, it's been good. 
It's the best um, way to describe it. We've been working out. So uh, you just heard though. So Doug games a lot, and a lot of you guys have an image of a gamer is like I know either a really overweight dude eating Doritos by a keyboard, or maybe a nerdy little kid. Yeah, but that is changing in a big way. All gamers I know now are into a lot of them are into lifting, lifestyle stuff. They're fashionable, you know. They're entrepreneurs. Yeah. So it's a whole new level of things coming, all because of social media. You think? Yeah. Well, that big thing. I think a big part of it too is like. I think some of these gamers, they become very successful and they make it a job and then they treat it as a job and they don't look at it as like that stereotypical way where you eat Doritos in your basement and mm. you got to get to level 100, you know, like they don't see it that way. They see it as a job and then they think like health is wealth because it's, it's so popular these days. Like everyone knows being healthy is very important, whether it's like just jogging for a little bit every day or getting a little bit of exercise, like it's super important. So I think that's like the biggest thing. So I think if a gamer knows that he's making a living playing video games, playing 10 hours a day or doing like an eight hour work shift, he knows sitting there at his desk eight hours every day, doing it weeks and weeks on end isn't healthy for them. So that's why they go to the gym and they start exercising, they get in shape. Like that, that's yeah, just that's my opinion with you. on somebody who's like, wait, no, I just, but you always sporty, obviously from the background though, you want yeah. to play football, you know what I mean? You're in the team. I just love them both a lot. Like, yeah. and I'm sure there's a lot of other people like that too, but I just realized that I was like really skinny. I had no confidence in myself. And the second I started lifting weights, I just loved it. Yeah, yeah. And I knew like I saw some dudes like I always want to have muscle. And there were some guys on the football team that had muscle and they could like bench press a plate like 20 times and I couldn't get it one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was always, I always just thought like, you know, it'd be so cool to have muscle. Like it, it probably feels so nice. It must be nice. And then so uh, that's what was your, your, yeah, let's talk about that shit. So what was your kind of driving force for the gym? Cause mine was legit and it's proper cliche, but it was Bruce Lee. Arnie and Stallone films like that's what did it that yeah. was my so I watched those as a kid and I'm like that is a man that's what a man looks like there was no other way in my head that there was any other way I was going to ever look I it see. was that and that is it that's what you've got to be I get it so I did what I needed to do to, to get to that like in terms of I started joining the gym I started doing like rugby and man sports and stuff you want to be a that, man it was that simple for me yeah, yeah. I think it's because I grew up like really without my father and I had three sisters so I was the eldest as well so I was like almost the man in the family. You had to set the example. For, like you had to up, be the father yeah. figure. Even though I wasn't, and it wasn't, there wasn't a demand for me by the family. Just innately, that's what kind of the role you take. It's just the way you felt. Yeah, being the you know the protector, the guy. Yeah. Then I started like, and bearing in mind, like I was quiet. I was like a not quiet kid, but I was never rough. So I'd never get in fights or anything like that. I genuinely scared of getting in a fight. And then literally went to uni, and two years, maybe a year, I've been at uni. I'm fighting in cages. What do you mean, like fighting? MMA fighting. Oh, okay. Cage, you know? okay. So I've gone from this kid who would never even, would talk and talk his way out of a fight in the street for anything to a couple of years later taking on like, fighting because it's a challenge and because it was the manly challenge thing. Yeah, I Not see. because I wanted to be a tough guy, but because it was the physical challenge that was the next one in line because I've been to the gym, I've done rugby, I've done this, come out of uni, right, what are you going to do now? And then I went to, I actually went to Thai boxing. So I was like, well, that'd be cool to learn, you know? And at the time I was working a bit of security as well. Uh, for extra money outside of PT and um, my, one of the guys was like come to Thai boxing with me it's really good you'll like it I was like yeah, okay I'll give it a go and so we were just doing we used to go down there do the drills didn't really spar or anything but then an MMA place opened up and he was like you've got to come with me and, and you check like out that. this MMA thing and I was like fuck's MMA like I didn't really even know uh, UFC was kind of coming through at that time yeah um, but in England it was still really low key really, like, it was all America at that point and uh, so we went and tried it out and they had us wrestling I'd never done before in my life and all of a sudden, I'm spinning on guys' backs, like hooking legs and shit. And they're like, damn, you're picking this up pretty quick. Like, how would you feel about, like, maybe in a month, like, entering this tournament we have? Like, cause I've been going for a few weeks. And I was like, I don't think so, man. I'm not into really fighting. I just like this because it, like, gets my lungs going and it gets me fit. Yeah. And they're like, no, you do well. And I was like, no, I'm like, go on, just give it a little go. I end up entering this freaking tournament with them. They were like, you'll be fine, trust me. It's like, it's amateur, you'll be cool. And I was like, you're not really going to get punched in the face too much or anything like that. It's very, like, it's limited in how much damage you can do. I ended up winning this freaking tournament. The that, whole thing? Yeah, yeah. And it was like, I had like five, six fights in one day. Woke up the next day, couldn't walk. Yeah, I can imagine. Because it was, you're allowed to kick and punch and everything to the, to the body. There was just no head strikes on the floor or anything like that. And there was limited, like, there was certain limitations on what you could do to the face and head. So it was a lot of kicking, a lot of body shots. And so you're catching elbows and knees every time you throw kicks. Because I was tying a lot of these guys were wrestlers. I was just kicking the shit out of them. Like, literally, <laughs> bang, bang. And, uh, Won the tournament. I was like sore afterwards. The next day, I woke up. My feet here 
the, the it just went from there to there like swollen oh my god from the top of my foot to like above my ankle just and I couldn't I couldn't even do that with my foot I couldn't uh. bend it I couldn't move it back and forth and I remember getting out of bed and put my feet down and just fell because like, I couldn't even stand it no was so way. painful until like you were ready for the pain but I wasn't ready for it I wasn't aware and then it kept me awake for like three days I couldn't sleep because every time I put the duvet around my feet and it pulled them down that would hurt you ice it? yeah I do I was doing everything they just bruised to shit because I was just raw. I was just whapping kicks everywhere. I'm kicking elbows, arms. I'm just kicking. Yeah, <laughs> it was my thing. And um, but then when they healed up, then it was it. I just carried on because I was like, well, we're in now. Let's... And obviously they were very supportive. And that's why you still box to this day then. That's why I still like love it to this day. And I credit part of my physique to that entire era of doing fighting. Like my back, shoulders, tries. It makes sense. Uh, massively. And that inner drive as well. You'll never do anything harder than a, f- a fight camp. It's just next level. I can imagine. Because they're pushing you to your brink and then making you keep going. Yeah. I, I, would, it would, I would equate it to as close to what I believe like military training would be like for... That's military. what I was just going to say to you. Like, is I, it as hard as military training? I, I feel like I, those are two... No, I think, I think like the physical aspect of military training would be harder. In fact, that you're put in like a cold environment, no food, no sleep, sleep deprivation. Or like the SWAT team, like the SEAL team. Yeah, the training, crazy like Navy fuckers. SEALs. Yeah, I yeah. would never get through that. Like the, what they call it, Hell Week and all that. And then like, you have like the deep sea divers. Have you ever seen that movie on like the deep sea diver? I forgot what his name was. The guy who was like a slave or like a Nazi. Oh. The, and he had to like go deep sea diving. Oh, and he has to overcome the fact that he's got no leg. Yeah, who was... Cuba Gooding Jr. Who was, who was the actor? It was a black guy. I forgot his Cuba name. Cuba Gooding Jr. I don't remember. It was like Denzel Washington was the actor or something. Like a really famous black actor and he was playing like a slave or like a Nazi in like a oh, certain yeah. time where like they were discriminated against and like there was no black divers at yeah, this time in life. Yeah, Cuba Gooding Jr. Are you sure? Yeah, 100%. It came out recently, like in the sure. last 10 years. I'm just saying, he has to get in a, glo- a courtroom of law with his legs yes. and move the suit yes. with the fake legs. Yes. Yeah, Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah. Yeah, he won, he won some of that, I think. Great yeah. film. It was a good great, film. Great, great film. What is that film called? I don't remember. That's the thing. I couldn't remember what it was called. It came out pretty recently, though. No, it's old, man. It's not that yeah, old, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be shocked at how old that is. I watched it on a plane one time, though. How much? They do have Cuba old Gooding on Diver. Let's put this up. I'll bring it up. Yeah, Men there it is. Look. Men of Honor, that's it. That's how, that's got to be yeah, it. Yeah, and it was, uh, where does it tell you the date where they came out? 2000. There it is, 2000. That's, yeah, 2000. that's an old movie. years ago, man. Dude, sometimes I see songs on the radio from like 2009 <laughs> when I was growing up as a kid, and it plays again. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's my jam. And then it says next to the song in 2009. And I just looked down at my phone, it's 2018. Damn, I'm like, damn. dude, am I getting old now? <laughs> yeah. Damn. But sometimes like we watch these movies years after they're released. Which I know I watched that one years after it was released. I'd never seen it, but it was one yeah, of those. Yeah, I didn't know about it when I was a kid. I saw it was Kurt Huber in it, and then I watched it because he was in it. Because at the time, I'd watched like um, Jerry Maguire. Okay. And so I knew him from that. Show me the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've yeah, heard of that. I've never that. seen it, but You've I never hear, seen Jerry I've heard Maguire. the show me the money thing a million times. Oh my so. God, seriously. So it's before my time, man. If you, if, on the plane home, <laughs> look for that film. You, feel good film. It's so good. Okay. So good. Oh my god, it's a legendary film. Damn. One of the best Tom Cruise Cuba films, definitely. Oh, Tom Cruise is in it? Yeah, he's the, he's the agent. Oh, then I'll watch it. I he's like Tom Cruise. Agent, and it's football. So he's a wide receiver, and Tom Cruise is his agent. And what happens is Tom Cruise is working for a major agency, and then he's trying to sign all these big plays, and then somebody kind of comes in underneath him, and they kind of start cutting him out. So he goes off on his own, but nobody goes with him. So it's just, he's an amazing agent, and the the company he's working for sniper all his talent as they oh, really? find out he's going to leave so he's he's like fuck it I'm leaving and they're each ringing each other all the time to try and get each client that he had and the a big company keeps sweeping up sweeping up sweeping up and he's left with just Cuba Gooding Jr who so I can't remember his name well at the time then, right? and he's kept him on the phone so long that he's now missed every other call for every other client so he's now his only client and the whole thing's about him trying to help him get further up with being his only client and so he needs to be like the best he can so that he can get him more clients yeah he needs to be the best but also he need, now needs to not be this kind of showman asshole that he was before dealing with many clients he needs it to be like very personal base level and personal so it's both yeah. of them growing through to you know find that's the, cool. the way yeah it's a really good that sounds like a cool movie honestly like it's it's a it's a real a heart uh, feel good film those are the stories that you like know the ending of it but it's like you want to see it anyway it's the film know? where the, the you had me at hello line comes from oh is it really yeah all those all the girls go you had me at hello and they were like ooh, ooh, dude, crying how over again? It. is this like from the 1990s or something I watched this years after it came out again so I've no idea when it was made I can tell you on Google tell us it's gonna be 1995 guys I reckon, I, I reckon seriously below. old Jerry Maguire Jerry there he goes Maguire it is 
years. 1996. <laughs> One year off, dude. Dude. I knew it. Yeah. Because like, it, was, it was super old when I watched it. I'm already. so good at like getting those guesses yeah. close. Like I was, I was on the line today for the Gymshark Expo. And a kid, uh, there's like a group of kids that came up to me that want to take pictures. And one of the kids says to his mate that's next to him, you guys say mate, right? Yeah, mate. We don't yeah. say, I'm catching on. He's like, he has his mate over here. I'm standing there. He goes, Doug, guess how old my mate is over here? Is that your British accent? Yeah, is that, is that good? <laughs> Doug. Hey, Doug. Doug. That sounded a bit like a remedial student. <laughs> he goes, hey, Doug. He says, Doug, guess how old my mate is? And I look at this kid and I'm like, I know this kid is like 15. <laughs> so I said, he's 15 years old. They're like, Man, how'd you know? I was like, I, I don't know. I just, I'm really good at those guesses. Good at guesses, terrible at like, terrible, terrible at Terrible at accents. I can't do Every, accents. Everything British sure that anyone does is like a chimney seat. Good eye, mate. Check out. How old do you think, Mark? No, I'm bloody Australian. Even I'm bad at that. Yeah, I can't what the hell's a chimney sweep? Good on you, fella. Oh, fuck, I can't even do it. I'm just going Aussie all the time. I've done too many Aussie accents this weekend. I mean, you have a British accent. I was doing Sharknado, and they wanted me to be a British <laughs> pilot in the movie. Are you f- real? Yeah, this is like a year and a half ago, like February of 2017. They wanted you to be in a Sharknado film. I was in the movie. You're I in I was it? the pilot. Shut up. Yeah, there's like a scene in everything where I like get my head eaten off by a shark, dude. Really? <laughs> yeah, you didn't know? How no? Yeah, this came out last year. I filmed it a year ago. They're like, all right. Which film? Which Sharknado? Sharknado really 5, known. the most recent one. Sharknado 5, yeah. pilot death. <laughs> Let's see what comes up. I can't, they are cult classics, man. April death scene. Right. Type, in, type in my name This death is what scene. we're doing tonight. What's that? Type in like my name death Sharknado. Sharknado 5. Type in like face sensor Sharknado 5. Oh, shit, it just pops straight up. There I am right there. Oh my God. There's me. Okay, That's when I was in Colombia and I reacted to like the scene of when... We uh we got eaten by sharks. Oh, this is stupid. We'll get rid of it. I can't believe it. So how did that come about? Um, they wrote in at the last minute. They wanted like a pilot to be in the movie. And like they wanted to give him lines. His name was Jock. So I was Jock the pilot. And uh, my girlfriend was going to be in Sharknado. She was going to play like this one role in it. And or if I you don't guess... know, Doug's girlfriend's like the best looking weather girl that you've seen on TV. Yeah, her name's Jeanette Garcia. Yeah, Google her. You're welcome, fellas. And uh, <laughs> and so she was in the movie, and they, they looked at me, and they're like, oh, this guy would be perfect for the role. So they asked me if I wanted to be the pilot in the movie, and I said, you're damn right I do, because I was going to go to London to... So she was in it, and then they Googled you, and they're like, yeah, bring him in too. Yeah, and we filmed this in London too. This is you in... Are you actually in this helicopter? Oh, God, no. All right, no. I'm not flying it there. <laughs> I'm still on the side watching. So this is a blonde guy looking out the that's, window. That's Ian Ziering. He's like the main actor. The next the <laughs> There's me Look right at you. <laughs> oh, this is you commentating on your own video. Yeah. There you go. Look at that stern look. Hang on a minute. Did you just sub you for a woman? <laughs> Same shot, different day. Same shot, different day. <laughs> Classic. The dog's looking scared. The helicopter flying towards the city. Oh, it's not looking good. And the shark eats the helicopter and Doug dies. <laughs> <laughs> Where did the shark come from out of nowhere? It's a flying shark. <laughs> so, this is the first time. <laughs> that is the great... Why is there not a gif of that? So, I, I told you that I want to be an actor. And this is the first time I've ever had an opportunity to be on a, oh, a set. 100% what a so great stuff. People like say Sharknado. Like, listen, Sharknado, at least it's popular, okay? There's a lot of movies Dude, out there. Sharknado is an absolute cult phenomenon. People Sharknado is a them. big film, so... I go out there and I'm on my first set and I, I've watched, like, I love the Avengers. I want to be Captain America. So I always watch behind the scenes. I'll watch, like, hours worth of B-roll footage and, like, cut footage from the Avengers to see, like, how they set cameras, how the actors set for the scenes. And I'll, like, study it, like, hardcore. So I knew exactly what I was getting myself into with Sharknado. I knew how <laughs> it was going to go down. The first scene I ever do acting, okay, they had a helicopter that they were renting for this 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 scene because I'm the, the pilot, right? I'm like getting the main character out and like I'm saving him from all the sharks. So they filmed <laughs> half. They rented this helicopter for half a day and they ran out of time, so we couldn't film all the scenes in the helicopter. When we got like some of them, like the B-roll scenes, are like yeah. me standing there, like looking, you know what I mean? And, like me saying what the hell is going on. But they couldn't get my death scene because they ran out of time with the helicopter. So I had to come back and film the next day in like a, a pickup. So they van. only had the helicopter for rented for like half a day. day. Heavy, okay. yeah. And they didn't get They the ran scene. out of time. The helicopter left. Next day, I come in and I'm in a van all by myself, right? And there's like 15 people around me. And I got this like gaming headset on. Go figure, right? <laughs> yeah. And I got like this plastic joystick controller to like, like a, play a with. old school, like. No, like a plastic one that you could like just take and oh, move okay. with you. And they're like, all right, play around with this. Like, 
you know, you got your headset on and then had like three different cameras on me and they have like a green screen behind me and I'm in this van all alone. So they filmed my death scene in a truck. And I'm in like this big like mini so like van a truck. Worker van. Yeah, worker like a van. worker it's van. A blue it was a worker, worker van. van. Yes, a crappy <laughs> silver worker van. And I'm sitting in the front seat and I'm all by myself and they go, All right, pretend that there's a Sharknado brewing in the distance over there and we want you to just pretend that it's happening. Meanwhile I'm looking out at a golf course on the middle of like a castle. So it's like a beautiful thing and I'm I wanna be like this. <laughs> but they want me to be like this. I like scared. Like they want me to be like petrified that there's a Sharknado coming. And they go, all right, Doug, so what you're going to do, you're going to say your lines, you're going to scream back at them, you're going to say, what the hell is going on? Then you're going to look back forward, you're going to start freaking out, uh, you're going to act like you can control the helicopter, then you're going to slowly start failing with the helicopter, look back out the distance, continue your panic, build the panic, and then all of a sudden, bam, shark comes in your face, you're going to react, uh, get eaten by the shark, and you're dead. All right, Wait, let's do this. That's already overwhelming me. Yeah, Just all by myself. Me what to yeah. do. First thing I've ever done, ever <laughs> in acting in my entire life. So that, that's how it came out. And I was all by myself. I didn't get to like rehearse my lines with anyone. I didn't like have a scene with another person where I could say, oh, so how do you imagine the scene going when we talk about this with each other? <laughs> oh, okay, great. That's, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. it was and literally like... A plaque and forth, get it going. No, yeah, the, right on the spot. They're like, all right, Sharknado's coming. Start getting panicked. Start freaking out. Escalated the panic. Boom. Get hit. Eaten by so shark. I have like 20 seconds to like decipher this in my head <laughs> and they're like, all right, action. And there's like 15 people watching you like, like that this staring at you eyes. And it's like, all right, Doug, it's showtime, baby. <laughs> this is what you do. So I'm trying to imagine how a shark in real life, if like a shark was coming at me and it was going to eat my face off. At first I was going like this, like, <laughs> but I'm thinking like, so, like if a shark's going to come at me, I'm going to like you're gonna do clinch this, my you're butt right? and I'm going to be yeah, like, you're going to do this, like that, the ugly face, like, ah. Yeah, and you're gonna like clench your teeth. Like this yeah. is just me speaking. If like a giant, like if I see one of those crab spiders, that's sp- why you should have thought of crabs. Yeah, the spider you. crab. Like <laughs> if I see a spider crab coming at me, I'm gonna be like, ah, yeah. I'm gonna do like my little girl pose. Like, Ooh. yeah, yeah. All so manliness leaves the body. That's kind of like, but I had to put my shoulders out because you know I'm Jack the pilot. So yeah, I'm yeah. like, oh, ah, uh, like that, and then boom, shark comes. Boom, in shark. Face. Boom, I was shark. gonna say like we were Jim shark. I was like, how come we don't see the shark actually eat you? That's why. Yeah. Yeah, you just see the blood go. Poof. Yeah. So that, was, <laughs> that was the first time Shark I did. Fucking NATO 5. That is uh, what a what a bucket list tick off. Yeah. It's a start. That's it, really. And all from the gaming, guys. Think of that. All you from Call from, of Duty. Went from gaming, playing Call of Duty, to being in a Shark NATO film. <laughs> <laughs> the links that you can create these days is insane. Yeah. Right. I, sh- I think we should have a look at what QAs have got. Hang on, I've got a sneeze coming. <laughs> Bless oh, you. Apologize. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Some people, not enough people say good bless you anymore when you sneeze. It's pretty simple. I know. It's like just, how yeah. I was raised. Sometimes it sneezes and no one says anything. I go, you're not going to bless me? <laughs> like, <come laughs> bless on. me, damn it. God bless damn it. me. <laughs> right, let's see. So, what have we got going here? Uh, what role does social media play in the fitness industry and how pivotal has it become for certain people's success within fitness? It's everything. It's everything now. Yeah, we both said the same it's thing. Fair. It's literally everything. You can have the best physique in the world, be the best looking you know, girl with the nicest ass and the beautiful body or the dude with like the shredded arms, the best six pack. But if you don't have social media following, you're not going to make any connections. Like it's, yeah. it's everything now. Everything. And um, look at a great example is The Rock. Movie star. But how does he push everything? Social media. Socials. Social media is everything. And he drives through that. He yeah. creates box office films through social media I think so too because them stand alone they're not box office winners no but because he could push it like yeah, I see his promos on it, it or I see him like uh, like working out in his iron paradise out in Hawaii filming like Jungle Cruise I'm like oh I want to go see Jungle Cruise because I know The Rock was like you know training in Hawaii for this movie that sounds really cool like I want to be doing that let me go watch this movie now yeah yeah you know yeah I think he does a good job I went and watched Rampage because of The Rock because he hyped it I saw it too you like it yeah I liked it I thought it was, it was okay. Cool. I thought it was fun. It was probably one of my like lesser rock films, but it was still good. Like it wasn't a horrible it's movie. A damn sight better than that Baywatch, and I went to watch that as well. I enjoyed Baywatch. Really, you didn't like it? I hated it. It was cringy to you. Hated it. Cringy. It just wasn't funny. It's like not funny. That all the funny moments were in the trailer, and they were actually timed better in the trailer than they were in the movie. Gotcha. Yeah, I was, I was just gutted. I thought it was pretty good. I, I enjoyed and it. The ending. What was the ending? I don't remember honestly. That thing where they're climbing, they're shooting fireworks at that woman, and they're climbing up that thing. It was oh, just and bad. like the woman like exploded, right? Yeah, she blows up in the end. It's just bad. Yeah, it's just so bad. But hey, people are gonna go see it. Cause people it's saw it. It won like a, a crappy award or something as well. But <laughs> I think I think The Rock's best film today is Jumanji. 
I think that was his like most that successful was film. Yeah, and it was recent when, too. See, that, that it was, was really last good. summer, right? That was really good. Or like, well, was I, it? No, it was soon. It was not long ago at all. Like less than six months ago, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That was a fun movie. That was fun. Like start to end, like it was just very Loved enjoyable. Very good. Yeah, and considering it was a technically like a not. It's not. what It was a well. It was film it was number like, two. It was part yeah. two, really, of Jumanji. How People thought it was a sequel to like Robin Williams, and he just passed sequel. away. So everybody was yeah. like, "You're so disrespectful. What, really? How can you do this for Robin Williams?" Yeah, because Robin Williams, he <laughs> passed away. He like committed suicide. And, and they, he was, what, so they're not allowed to make another exactly. film? Exactly. Well, there was Jesus. people who were complaining about it, you know. Well, just, it was a oh huge my out, God. It was a huge outcry. Just what is wrong with these people? It's like nothing Some people do. just want to be fucking miserable about shit all yeah. the time, don't they? And the movie was great. I mean, it everyone loved it. I think, I think Jumanji broke $1 billion. Yeah, it did. Which yeah, is did. crazy. That's well. crazy. Yeah, I remember that going up. Billion dollar films are not easy. Kevin Hart, Rock. The cake yeah. scene. Where it's like you eat cake, you explode. Oh yeah, he <laughs> took cake and it blows up. That was some funny stuff. Yeah, I like that, that was movie. Good. That was good. And it was a complete different concept to the original film. Yeah, it was so the different. Game. Yeah, it was completely different. And completely then you got different. you got him in uh, Fast and Furious. Like that's when I started becoming a fan yeah. of The Rock when he was like Agent Hobbs in yeah, Fast and Hobbs Furious. I think it was Fast Five. Yeah, that's yes. when I first became a fan of The Rock. You know they're doing a um, a Hobbs standalone. Movie? Yeah, I, I heard know, about I don't it. Know if that's gonna work. He hasn't started filming it yet, but it's gonna happen. You think? I'm sure it's gonna be good. You don't think it can be? I don't know. See, like, I don't know if it's a, 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 the character's deep enough to run a whole film off. Hobbs? Yeah, because I mean, he's just a he's just a an elite bully, really. I guess there's it? only one way to find out. They're gonna have to like draw his daughter in. He's or, gonna have to have a really like good a like pro- family protagonist or... to work against. Yeah, somebody good. Like this is the problem with a lot of the Rock's films. They're fantastic. He's great. You watch him. He's good. Supporting cast good, but then the main bad guy that they're always fighting is a proper B-rate actor. Like who? Give me an example. Um, Rampage, the brother and sister who are running the evil company. Yeah. Both terrible. Actually, the girl is in Billions. She's the wife of Bobby Axelrod. If you watch Billions, I haven't watched Billions. That girl, like the main girl in the movie, like, and then you had that guy who was like kind of nerdy, right? Yeah, he's like terrible. The, the, the How brother? is he cast in any film ever? He's terrible. Know. He's terrible in every film he's in. Really? I don't know who the guy I've is. I've seen him in a bunch of films. The moment I saw him, I went, oh, no. You've seen him before, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, he's terrible. Yeah. He's in, like... He's, he's always, in comedy he's movies, like right? A, a, a dumb jock or something like that in things. Yeah. And that girl, I, I've seen her... Because I watched the show. She Billings. wasn't so bad, but she also wasn't great. Yeah. I always think that, too. Like, the it's, way I see it, because I want to be an actor and I want to be, like, a mainstream actor one day. Really? That's your... you now... You're my next goal. That's... Where you really after want to gaming that. and after like YouTube and obviously yeah. fitness will always be there with me but yeah I do want to do acting and if I'm going to do something I want to do it 100% I don't want yeah. to be average I want to be the best I want to be number one and I always think to myself I look at like the guys that are on the top right now and they're in movies with like people that I've never seen before never heard of a perfect example of that because Deadpool 2 is coming out this yeah. week so everyone's going to go see Deadpool 2 everybody saw Deadpool 1 right uh-huh. remember that taxi driver yeah, the cab yeah, driver. Yeah, yeah. And now Who the hell is a, that guy? He's a big part. In, well, you don't know that though because you ever watch things now, you like watch something older and you're like, oh, damn, look, it's them. Yeah. And you didn't notice them before because you didn't know who they no, were. No, but I do my research, but, so I looked him up and I didn't really well, see IMDb. any movies. He was, yeah. yeah. I didn't really see any movies, but hey, he, he was, a lot of TV, he was great in the movie though. He was really funny. The taxi well, guy. Just be, yeah, it just could be a lucky casting. It was a lucky casting. Yeah, well. Or maybe, maybe he, he put in, yeah, maybe put in the work. You never know. Yeah. Like people have their own situations. And sometimes they expand a role based on accidentally getting someone good. So maybe it was a minor role that then they made bigger because he was good and the, the yeah. And I'm sure because he's in the trailer good. again for Deadpool too. Yeah. So he's like now he's an integral role. Now he's like a like people are like oh it's that guy I want to see what scene he's in with Deadpool now yeah. you know like people like it you know so or DP you are living the life or it's kind of like with sports all the time you see like players in sports get undrafted or players that weren't supposed to make it who become the champion you know it happens all yeah, the time we're fighting yeah. like there's always the underdog and <laughs> I, I feel like I've been the underdog my whole life so I believe that anybody could do anything they set their mind to yeah and there's the whole thing of luck uh, is not a thing like luck is just you creating opportunities that you can then take advantage of and it looks so like luck it looks like it's hard to explain you positioned it. yourself in a certain point in life to have an opportunity to try something that's the luck that's what luck is is working to position yourself yeah unless you win the lottery uh, yeah, yeah. That just that's just like luck. dumb luck yeah, yeah dumb luck yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay dokie okay. we'll just do two more let's have a look because we're gonna what are we at now we're at now yeah so we got two more uh, we, oh, so you we have a game on and you're still kicking shit with fitness questions fair enough <laughs> what do you use to track your workout routines um 
I want to be able to go to the gym, not think about which lifts and how many sets, how much weight, how many reps that I'm supposed to do on that particular day and just go. But I tend to feel too bogged down with tracking things. I mean, this is that's one that's of those questions where, actually. yeah, I think that's one of those questions where you want a simplification for something that doesn't have one. That's like saying that like, I want to lose weight, I want to look good, but I don't want to monitor my food. I was like, cool, you can't, I agree you can't with you. do it then. I agree cool. with you. No, you've got no chance. Because every time yeah. I go into a workout, I'm always thinking about, okay, if I'm doing chest, am I doing incline, decline, the, uh, normal bench, dumbbell, barbell, am I doing a cable fly, am I going to do a dumbbell fly, am I going to do a machine press, am I going to do a butterfly press, am I going to do a, I, in a essence, cable, you know. Like, if you're just training for bodybuilding, it doesn't really fucking matter which one of those you pick. So I suppose in that sense, it doesn't really matter. No. As long as you've got a compound movement, like two compound movements in isolation, you're good. So it doesn't really matter what the fuck you're doing. Unless you want to get better at certain compounds, then you have to strategically track your progress in those lifts. And I would say that with deadlifting and stuff like that. Google.com. Google.com. Best thing yeah. in the world. Google yeah. it. It is its own being at this point. You can ask it anything, it will have an answer. But I would say, like, I mean, I don't religiously track my whole workouts. The only thing I'm tracking right now is the weights I lift on compound and what week I'm in of those weightlifting. So I'm not like maxing out every week. And when I'm not maxing out, I'm doing a percentage of my max. So obviously I have to work that out for my max percentage. But other than that... And they have workout plans too. Like there's billions there's of workout so plans. There's so many workout there. plans, like basic workout plans you can just go and look at and just go off. But again, they're going to make you track. everything. Everything's consistency in time. And you can only have consistency if you know what, what you're doing. And the same goes with your diet. So if you don't know what you're doing, then you're pissing in the wind. See, people, like, this is like a little bit off topic, but people say like Insanity is doing the same exact, same exact thing over and over again expecting different results. But at the same yeah, time, that's true. I do think that you need consistency in something you do. So if you're in the gym, you got to do the same thing over and over and over again, like simplifying it. You got to do a bicep curl. You got to do a compound movement. You got to do it over and over and over and over again until you get your muscle to be small to make it bigger. So does that make it insane then? You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. It's a random thought I had. To do what to make it small? So like, all right, so if you want to make your arms big, you got to do dumbbell curls, Yeah. right? Just simplifying it. Well, you got to do them over and over and over again over time consistently to make it bigger. Does that make it insane? Because because you're doing the same thing over again. You're doing the same thing the same over result. again. Except yeah, but you should result. be doing the same because you should be incrementing the weight up. Right. So that's then that, that little thing is a change. It's exactly. a change nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what it's about. Just constant progression. Constant progression. Yeah. If something's not changing, why is it not changing? And how can you make it change? Like constantly be monitoring in that sense. hundred percent. You have to be like, and be, be critical about yourself. Be don't, positively critical. Yes. Be positively critical. Yeah. Don't be like, I suck. I can't do I it. I love I'm finding bad. out when I've been doing something wrong because it means I now have a progressional point to go straight exactly. toward. Yeah. I love that. Because, you know, so what? You've been doing it wrong. You've now found that you've been doing it wrong. So cool. Now you've got something positive to go after again. And you know you'll see change because you're going to do something different. Yeah. That's how I look at everything in that kind of sense. I don't sit there and go, oh, fuck me. I wasted a year lifting wrong. No. Everything is a yeah. lesson. Nothing is zero either. Like, even if you're putting in 100% effort and doing it badly so that it's only giving you 60% of the rewards you should have, you still made that 60%. You just haven't maximized your time, but you've not wasted it. But now you know how to maximize your time. Yeah, and, that's now you thing. Max, and that is it. You usually only know how to maximize by wasting. You learn from error. That's how we learn. That's how we get better. Nobody's perfect. Exactly. And we're never perfect. Unless you're Always Steve Cook. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> possibly. Possibly, unless you're Steve. I think Steve was, was built by a cartoon network. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> He's like Johnny Bravo, but yeah, better. Yeah, freaking is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, Steve's a super positive guy. He's very upbeat. Which is, uh, and I used to think, general demeanor is like that. I used to think at first, like, I first met Steve for the first time like three years ago. I was like, wow, this guy is so nice. And then over time, I was sponsored by Gymshark. I picked up. So I started talking to Steve on, like, more of, like, a like a even level yeah. instead of, like, being a fan to, like, a... Oh, yeah. You, start, you, you know what I mean? Like, you start with, someone you're working with. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, like, there's no way in hell this dude is this positive. Nobody's this positive. Yeah, he is. I've known this dude for three years. And now he's the most positive guy yeah, I know. Every time you see him. Yeah. He's, he's a, yeah. It is, and it goes a long way. Like, it's not easy to stay positive all the time. It takes energy, and like, it's not about it's not about like, negative. yay, I'm positive. Yeah, it's I'm not great. bullshit positivity. Like it's, everyone's yeah. gonna go through a problem or an issue, or they're gonna be yeah. stressed out. It's about how you handle and react to things. I, I think yeah. the most popular saying is like, life is about like ninety nine percent how you react to situations you're going yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what it is. Yeah. Just you knowing how to handle it, things. Let it eat you, or you can can work your way through it. Yeah, Just to, yeah, and it is like. It takes energy to be positive. It does. It's super easy to be negative because it's lazy. That's it takes why a lot no of people do it. takes no energy to criticize something or find a bad point or do, like, it doesn't take it. It's easy. You can pick apart anything in moments. 
It's human nature. Yeah, it's so easy. But it's harder to find the good, focus on it, and continue to be like that and see the good in people. It takes energy, and that's why people are lazy and become very negative. So, yeah, it, you've got to put effort in anything you do that's going to give you positive. It takes effort. You get out what you put in. That's, uh, I think it's a good message overall. So keep grinding. Yeah. Keep grinding. Keep, keep the working. dreams in focus, and don't get too discouraged. It'll work um, out, I promise there's you. There's too many messages on the Instagram for me to scope through to find them. So we've... Um, I think, we'll, I think we'll, that's pretty good. I think we've, what we are now, now we're 10. We're pretty cool. There's a lot of nice pictures going up on Gymshark here. We should probably be retweeting. When's that from? Let me see. The Gymshark gang are ready to lift the city. Oh, that was from eight hours ago. Behind the times legs. It's a good selfie picture there. So, yeah. If you want to know any more about Doug or myself, you can find us in all the links below. So if you're listening on um, iTunes, they should be in the description box. You should be able to find our links and things like that. But you can search Doug on Instagram at Doug. Uh, phase underscore sensor is my. Oh, you don't have Doug in it, do you? But if you just search Doug, it should bring you up. But Phase sensor is your Instagram. Yeah, Phase underscore sensor, Doug sensor Martin. Doug there you Martin. go. That'll bring you up on um, Instagram. Doug bag, whatever. Self Lex underscore fitness. But if you want to go on YouTube, you can literally just search Lex Griffin or Doug Phase sensor and we'll pop up somewhere along the way. And hopefully, we'll be popping up in more videos that are there. Have both of us in at the same time. Next time we'll talk about skydiving. (laughs) Yeah, we'll be doing something cool. So thank you all for joining in. Wrestling with alligators. (laughs) Did you see that? I saw one recently. That's just something I could see. Guy sticking his head in the gate, and you're like, bad idea. (laughs) No, wrestling with wrestling with either alligators or wrestling with uh, spider crabs. I want to know what guy works and wakes up in the morning and goes, you know what I'm gonna do today? (laughs) He's like Steve Irwin, dude. (laughs) Oh, but that dude died by the most random shit. He died by like a manta ray stinging. Yeah, yeah, to the heart. It's like I don't think I don't think it's like. This only second of that death or something ever recorded or something crazy. Seriously? Maybe even the first. So he probably trusted the singer. Probably right? had a better chance of winning the lottery than that happening. He I probably, probably trusted it. That's why it happened. Yeah, he trusted coming. it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Because he's down. an expert. Yeah. It's like that Barboza head kick. Yeah. He took. Barboza head kicked uh, Kevin Lee. There was that one moment where Kevin Lee in the fight just got a little bit and dropped his hands just a touch. He killed him? No, he did that. If you look up Kevin Lee, they've done like a lot of. He does like a chicken dance because he gets kicked. His legs go out from under him, but then he comes back, takes the Barboza down, and just keeps grinding out, wins the fight. The fucking beast that he is. But he, uh, there was just that one moment, and it nearly all went wrong. Wow. So always keep your guard up. That's, yeah. the, that's the lesson of the day. So yeah, you go. You can find us all on all the links in the description below. Big thank you to, for coming on. It's appreciate it. It's Much appreciated. Pleasure, and hopefully we'll have some cool shit for you guys on the YouTube, iTunes, and everything from here on out. So this has been the Crewcast. Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next one. We are out.